Hey, this is Gavin Gaddis in for Tom Webster. I'll be reading this first person article for him today as he's under the weather. This is Sounds Profitable for Wednesday, September 6th. Actually, we love ads. Tom takes a look at data from the podcast landscape that reinforces the value of good branded podcasts and what they can accomplish. But first, the deadline to register for the 2023 Black Podcasting Awards ceremony is coming fast. RSVP now to attend the live virtual event on Facebook Sunday, September 24th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Link in the show notes. See you there. Bit of a short one this week as I have finally contracted COVID after successfully avoiding it for over three years. Spoiler alert, it sucks. The show, however, must go on through Gavin. One of my favorite findings from last week's release of our groundbreaking study, The Podcast Landscape in America, was this chart comparing the appeal of various types of TV slash film slash celebrity related content. The graph is labeled, for each type of podcast, how likely would you be to listen? And the four responses are from highest response to lowest. A podcast about a favorite TV show or movie, which got 52% of response. A podcast produced by a favorite TV show or movie, 48% of response. A podcast hosted by a favorite celebrity or creator from another medium, 46%. And in last place, a podcast about a favorite brand or product at 41%. I love the fact that a podcast hosted by a favorite celebrity doesn't quite hold the appeal of a podcast about a favorite TV show or movie. This makes sense. You at least know what the latter is about, while the former is not quite enough information to make a decision. I'm not sure I want to hear a podcast hosted by Vin Diesel or Henry Cavill, but give me a Dungeons & Dragons podcast from Vin or a Warhammer 40k podcast from Henry and you can take my ear money right now. That's not what I want to focus on for this newsletter, though. Rather, look at the data point in quote-unquote last place on this graph, a podcast about a favorite brand or product. Sure, it's in fourth place on this list, but not by much. The percentage of Americans 18 plus who would be interested in a show about a favorite brand or product is almost as high as the percentage who are interested in a podcast from a favorite celebrity. Isn't that remarkable? In an era where we have more ad-free content than ever and more tools available to block, skip, or otherwise dodge the withering torrent of unwanted advertising we are pelted with every day, more than 4 in 10 say they'd like a show about a favorite brand. There are two things to take away from this incredible stat. First, it's an utter validation of branded podcasts. People do care about their favorite brands and form communities around them. There's no reason why a well-produced podcast about a brand with A, a community of passionate loyalists, and B, a real story to tell, can't be as successful, if not more so than, whatever the Sussexes do next. It's one of the reasons why the Trader Joe's podcast is so damn good. First and foremost, it's a good podcast, but also a podcast whose subject is utterly fascinating to so many of us, whether we are regular customers or not. If you love Trader Joe's, you're fascinated by the story behind some of the products you know and love. And if you are just Trader Curious, like me, you want to know exactly what happens after hours when the lights are off and the doors are locked. Are there elves? Oompa Loompas? Is it like Nixum? I don't think it's like Nixum. But the brand fascinates me, and I want to know more. That's not the only thing to consider from this snap, however. The key word in that response is favorite brand. That question made the respondents think about a favorite brand, not just the first one they grab in the potato chip aisle. We all have favorite brands, products and services that we don't just love, we proselytize for. I haven't owned a car in 12 years. A car is useless to me where I live. So every time I hear an ad for a car in a podcast, it's an annoyance. The same is true for mattresses. I have one. Food delivery services. I cook. Thank you very much. And zip recruiter. I don't. Uh, uh, zip recruit. But as I look at my desk this morning, I am surrounded by brands I love and even evangelize for. There are wood desk accessories from Ugg Monk, one of my favorite small design companies. Blackwing 602 pencils and a Parker fountain pen. Mosquit glasses. An Earthworks microphone. My ride or die MDR 7620 editing headphones. A Ray Samuels headphone amp. Some original art from Christiana Piarm. 
all things I could tell stories about because I love them. A Toyota ad in a podcast is an annoyance to me, but I could listen to five minutes of branded content in the middle of my favorite show from Ugmunk's Jeff Sheldon about the next piece of machined wood I am likely going to buy from him. We love the brands we love. When advertising is relevant and taps into those passions, it transcends into content. When it doesn't, only then is it seen as intrusive. I think branded podcasts only capture one part of the equation. Let's make a podcast that taps into the passion people have for a topic or host as an introduction to a brand. But the inverse is also possible. Let's make a show that taps into the passion people have for a brand as an introduction to the podcast or the host. In that sense, anyone can make a branded podcast, whether you work for the brand or not. This very article has me thinking about a pencil podcast because I love me some pencils. But this is also yet another reminder to learn as much about your audience as you can. Are there products or brands that your audience seems to gravitate towards? Can you learn about this and package that data to potential sponsors? It's a lot easier for an audience to use a promo code when they haven't automatically turned their brain off to an irrelevant ad. My dream is that I will someday find podcasts that are exactly the content I want, supported by exactly the ads I want to hear. This would be a good thing for the industry, and a reminder that this is what programmatic advertising is capable of. You see it in your Facebook stream every day. Until that day, however, let this data point serve as a reminder to us all that we don't hate ads. We just hate irrelevant ads, and that the passion we podcasters seek to tap into can literally come from anywhere. Thanks again for listening to Tom's article, Actually, We Love Ads. This episode is hosted on Art19. He was Tom Webster. I was Gavin Gaddis. We'll see you around.